Google's free AI coder just got even better. Gemini is now your personal storyteller and Meta just released their biggest vision model yet. Hey everyone, this is Eric from Firecrawl. And in this video, I'll be taking you through everything that has happened in the world of AI in the last few days. Let's begin with some of the biggest updates of the week. Google's Jules AI coding agent just introduced a feature that reviews and critiques code before you even see it. This acts like a peer reviewer, challenging every proposed change through review to catch subtle bugs and missed edge cases. The critic is integrated directly into to the code generation process, evaluating the final output in a single pass before submission. It creates a real-time feedback loop, flagging issues, and hands code back to Jules to improve, potentially multiple times, until it's perfect. It flags subtle logic errors that pass tests but fail on unseen inputs, catches silent parameter drops in function signatures, and identifies inefficient algorithms with unnecessary complexity. This is based on the actor-critic architecture from reinforcement learning, where Jules generates and the critic evaluates. Along with this, Gemini's new update introduced many new features including Storybook, a feature that transforms memories, ideas, and complex concepts into personalized illustrated storybooks with narration. You can generate unique books and audio from simple text descriptions. It uses your own photos and files as inspiration and creates content in various artistic styles in more than 45 languages. The update also includes Deep Think Mode for ultra subscribers with improved reasoning for complex math and coding problems, temporary chats that won't be safe to history, personalized responses using past chat history, and study tools like practice quizzes and flashcards. It's available Available now in the Gemini app with educational tools accessible through the free pro plan for students. Next up, Google also released Gemma 3270M, a new model in the family of lightweight open models built from the same research as Gemini. The family now includes five sizes, 270 million, 1 billion, 4 billion, 12 billion, and 27 billion parameters, all featuring multimodal capabilities that handle text and image input. The 270 million model scored 61.4% on BullQ and 67.7% on PAQ. PA, while the 27 billion model hit 87.8% on human evil and 89% on math benchmarks. For multimodal tasks, the 27 billion scored 64.9% on MMU and 86.6% on DocFuQA. These models have large context windows, 128k tokens for the larger models, and 32k for smaller ones, with multilingual support across more than 140 languages. They're trained using TPU hardware and available as open source models. Next up, DeepMind made Imogen 4 generally available with three model variants named Fast, Flagship, and Ultra. Imogen 4 Fast costs just two cents per output image and is up to 10 times faster than previous models, perfect for high volume content generation. The Flagship variant offers significant improvements in text rendering and photorealistic generation with up to 2K image generation capability, and Ultra provides the highest level of detail and prompt adherence. These are latent diffusion models with improved spelling, typography, and richer colors and textures. And finally, Meta released Dino version 3, a breakthrough in self-supervised vision AI that scales to 7 billion parameters trained on 1.7 billion images, making it seven times larger than Dino version 2. This is the first SSL model to outperform weekly supervised counterparts across diverse tasks while using only a fraction of the compute. It jumped from Dino version 2's 49.5 to 55.9 on ADE20K segmentation and improved from 76.6 to 83.3 on Davis video tracking. It achieved state of the art performance across object detection, depth estimation, and segmentation without any fine tuning. The model suite includes VIT variants from small to 7 billion parameters and Comnex models optimized for edge deployment. It's fully open source with complete model weights, training code, and commercial licensing. And that was this week's roundup. For more developer tools and detailed hands-on tutorials, don't forget to check out the Firecrawl blog. And I'll be back again with bigger updates, breakdowns, and tools that you should actually care about next week. Until then, keep building, keep shipping, and don't forget to hit subscribe.